house thing on in it. You know, you you know, you know. <laughs> when I heard it, I was like, okay. You know, you know, I had to put a, li- a little, you know, positive vibrations on. You know what I mean? Mm. Whilst whilst you're in the studio with us, right? So, nine twenty-one round there on Flex Milk Tray in the building, and uh, got a special guest come to join me. You know what I mean? October, Black History Month, and all that good stuff, and um. This this young man I've known for for a while, but we we you know we primarily met as DJs because he's a DJ like one of my favorites yeah like to be honest a lot of the songs that are in this folder I've been in a rave and shazammed whilst he was playing I'm not I'm <laughs> I'm just telling I'm saying it how it is right now. <laughs> Stop it, calm down, calm down. Trust me, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So we met on the DJ circuit, but then we kind of connected on you know on other levels, and then we found out that you know we're both doing some really amazing work and doing some great great stuff. And um, I said, you know what? I'd love to just have you on the show this morning. So um. Mr. Daryl Blake, how are you, sir? Good morning. I am fantastic. Uh, I'm lying. I'm tired. That sleep that you were talking about earlier, <laughs> is, I was when you were saying it, I was thinking about, mm, like, sitting down. It's when your knees click when you sit down. Oh, shucks. That's when you're like, yeah, do you know what? Let me just, do you know when the worst time for me that is? You know when you're, like, tidying up? Yeah. Vacuuming or yeah, yeah, putting yeah. stuff away, arranging stuff. You're like, all right, let me just take a little moment out. Yes. The worst time to sit down is when you're cleaning. Okay. Because that's when you get comfortable. Like, all right, let me just, and then it just hits you straight away, and you're like, wow, well, do you know what? I've done all right for today. Let me do the yeah, best yeah, later yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next day comes and you still haven't done it. So yeah, I'm, I'm tired, but I've, I've got energy anyway. I know that life. And I, I know that life. And what I've realised is that the walls in the studio. They are carpeted, so if at any point I need to take a snooze, I can just do it standing up. That is amazing. Thank you, management. We appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, sir. Yes, King. You are in, in the building, mm-hmm. live on Flex. Um, so, Black History Month, there's lots going on, there's lots happening. Um, and we were at an event on Saturday together. Yes. Shatter the Taboo. Yep. Um, got a big up, you know, the main lady herself, Miss Marisha. Good morning. Um, and I just wanted to kind of just get you on the show because I know that you're doing a lot within the community uh, for those that are a little bit, you know, unfortunate or, or in circumstances. And um, I just want to just get you on and just say, like, just let the people all know what it is you've been doing, what you've been up to, where you've been going and all that jazz. Because you've been doing a lot, bro. Try to be like you, man. Oh, get, get out of here. <laughs> get get out of here. So let, let them know what, what you've been up to. Please, sir. Okay, um, my name's Daryl Blake. Um, some of you may know me as DJ Melo D. DJ Melo D, 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 um, D I've been a, a sort of like a student of milk trays for about 20 years now. <laughs> Don't listen to this guy. No, joke. But um, yeah, um, I am... Oof, I wear many hats, but more so of being uh, an activist, a uh, researcher, um, more of a youth leader, mm-hmm. and sort of like um, someone who like thrives, loves black history. Yeah. So um, what I've been doing recently has been using my platform to sort of engage in with the community, especially with young people, uh, to kind of give them a sense of belief, validation, and also sort of like a... Uh, a vision in life that they may have been obscured from or sort of in a sense where it's about showing them how great you are so especially working in communities um like the bame community Mm -hmm. um some of our young people in society are disenfranchised and um it's about me using my space and my time to give them the energy and the love that they deserve most importantly setting them up and giving them the right tools for them to be able to navigate in the future become better versions of us Aye, that's what it's about now following you like on the instagram and you know having conversations like bro like how did you kind of make 
that transition from from like DJ to like I, I don't to, 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 I, I'd say influencer. Okay. Um. Well, I've always had a knack for uh, sort of self love. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm from a Caribbean background. My father's from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Mom's from Barbados. I've always had that sort of rootsy kind of yeah. influence in my life, especially when it comes to music. Um, yes. Grew up on reggae music. Um, you know what I mean? Some of the revolutionary music from Bob, some of the Black Uhuru stuff that really motivated me. Um, and, it's, you know, you'd have fun in like the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. but there would always be a, don't forget, represent sort yeah. of thing and um if i'm honest actually i haven't really spoken about this but if i'm like going through like when i started off being like a uk funky dj yes um my main thing was just getting out there getting out there getting out there getting out there doing bookings playing 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 being as big as milk tray and um literally just trying to be a better version of myself yes. but trying to Make sure Milkshake sees me as someone who's <laughs> valuable in the industry. You see these guys. This this, um, this, this, this is this is what I have to this is what I have to put up with all the time. Yeah, it's true. You got you got you got to take your credit. Um, first time I heard you play was at a Mustard Bar. I think it might have been an electric opera. Or electric like opera. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so shout out to um TAE. Yeah. Um, love those guys. And uh, I was like, yeah, I want to be like Milkshake. So for the industry anyway, I was working as a young like funky house DJ. I'm in house DJ, just navigating through, just trying yeah. to make a name for myself. Um, but then I remember I posted something about uh, Marcus Garvey. Mm-hmm. And it's because it was just like his birthday. I was like, yeah, big up Marcus Garvey's influential one in the mm-hmm. whole world, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people were saying, thank you for saying that. I actually got like messages on Facebook saying, oh, that was a real brave post. I was thinking, mm-hmm. why is that brave? And I thought in the current climate, some people feel a bit scared to voice their opinion or mm-hmm. show self-love. So I was like, all right, okay. So I continued to do it and test the waters and see what my reaction would mm-hmm. be, knowing that <clears throat> in this day and age, sometimes when you become like highly vocal, yes. um, it could, if you're someone in the entertainment industry, it can go left or go right for you. Mm-hmm. You may like, some people might disconnect from you because they don't show this, share the same values. Um, but with me, it was okay because I was always about being humble, pure love and showing love to everybody, no matter yeah. where you come from. So. As I started to do that, I was getting appreciation from like silent listeners that mm-hmm. would like never like or anything, but they would inbox me and say, oh, I love that post, keep going. I was like, okay. Um, and when the transition really happened was when um, I was at a booking at, oh, where was it? Um, Apt. At okay, Park. APT. Yeah. In the city. At, yep. Yeah, I remember those days. Oh, uh, yeah. It was not too far from Agenda. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Get me Good started. times, man. Um, and... I finished my set and I think I was on with Dog Tanyan and someone came up to me was like, oh, are you Melody? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, big set. I was like, thank you. And he's like, oh, you done a post the other day um, about why we should celebrate our mothers and why we should, you know, get in tune with our Caribbean side and African side um, and kind of like love yourself. And I, like, I really appreciate it. I showed it to my mom and she was like, yeah, that's a young man talking about the realness and i was like wow mm-hmm. like to affect someone and then for them to show their parent it's like yes major so i was like let me keep doing <clears throat> keep doing it sorry um so that sort of be that was like the journey from okay from, from being a uk funky and house dj to making that transition was slowly just posting i've always just loved myself and celebrated myself so and then now it just grew because people were saying oh say some more speak some more could you come here and this? so that's that's pretty much where I'm at today. That's taking you up and down on your travels. You you you've you've received awards and and like all this stuff, bro. It's amazing. Thank you. And it, like, I've always believed the children are the future. Yeah. But the more I engage with the young people and pretty much like submerge myself within young people, mm-hmm. like doing ethnographic work, I start to realize how much they value us but also how much we've let them down as okay, a nation. Yeah. In, in a sense, where I say this is, we equip the young people with the tools to just go out there and work. But sometimes we lose out on them just growing up and then finding their own feet. It's, mm-hmm. The society that we, like, for example, if you look at the education system, it's pretty much predi- predicated on, you know what? 
let's just get them into the building and make them do tests. And if they fail, they fail. If they do great, they do great. And that's scary because there are young people today who suffer from anxiety, all sorts of depressions. And coming from like deprived areas, there are ongoing things in the background with some of our young people that's not at the forefront of the conversation. So when it comes to, for example, when like these, a school that I work in currently, um, I sat down with a group of young people, five of them, and I said, um, what grade are you currently working at? They're in year 11. And they said, oh, I'm on a grade four, grade five. Some said grade three. I was like, so what is it that's going to stop you from going to grade six, seven, eight mm-hmm. and nine? And what's going to actually get you there? And they actually told me directly, said, I don't think I'm smart enough. And I was like, why? Well, the last test I done, I got 10%. So I'm definitely not smart enough. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you are smart. You're very intelligent. And they was like, well, no, because I'm dumb. I was like, wow. And I said, why are you dumb? I said, because I did the test. They made me think like, we put so much pressure on our young people to just pass this test, pass this test, pass this test. And if they fail, they automatically think they're dumb, which gives them anxiety, which gives them pressure. Tests are based, tests is not based upon intelligence. It's based upon what you actually remember. So you can literally, that's why they say like, maths is it's easy and it's hard because if you remember how to work something out that's yeah, it yeah, yeah. as opposed to science you've kind of got to you know, remember yeah. formulas and so on and so forth so within communities that I work in and with young people in schools I'm sort of trying to be the bridge where I'm showing them their own validation but trying to figure out methods in order for them to understand how to navigate through school and outside of school because there's other pressures in terms of societal influences. Yeah. So going back to the maths thing, for example, a lot of them don't like maths. A lot of young people don't, um, especially from a certain background. So what I did was I transferred the idea of trigonometry and Pythagoras by simply giving them an example of how to, how to do angles. So okay. What, so what I did was an example, and people can use this as well, is like, um, I asked them, did they like basketball? And they said, yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, well, what I want you to do is shoot this basketball into that hoop. It was like, sure, no problem. First time, swoosh. Other person, first time, swoosh. Other person, second time, swoosh. Other person, swoosh, swoosh. I was like, so you just did maths? And it was like, how? I was like, how did you know how to throw the ball directly into the hoop mm-hmm. and make it go swoosh right through. It was like, oh, because I just knew how to, exactly. You knew how long it was going to go in the air uh, at the speed with you. and how to get in. I'm with you. I'm with you. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's literally how you calculate distance. Speed times time equals distance. You just did math. Jeez. So when they're like, why? Okay. So when I've showed them other things, I was like, do you like like Pythagoras? You know, do you like angles? They're like, no, I hate it. I was like, all right, stand up. I was like, okay, sit down. Okay, stand up. Okay, sit down. Okay, stand up again. Sit down. It was like, why are we doing this, sir? I'm like, you just did angles. You just did Pythagoras. How? Well, when you sat down, your legs had to bend. So when you sat down, you made a right angle with your body. Mm -hmm. You did maths. You actually walk. When you're walking and you're counting the steps or you've got a little movement going, you're counting beats, beats per minute. So you are doing maths even when you're walking. Like, you can do it. It's about transferring some of the incremental studies and doctrine and lessons that we have in schools and making it accessible for those who develop a certain way. Like a lot of our young people are dyslexic and don't even know it. Yeah. And a lot of schools don't recognize or go into further um, testing with our young people to say, do you know what? Maybe there is another way that we can go about teaching these people. Some um, ac- ac- academies uh, have one way of uh, uh, teaching and it, it can't work. We all learn differently. differently some of, yeah, some yeah. of us are kinesthetic learners. Some of us are auditory. Some of us um, are, are uh, visual learners. So it's about identifying young people's abilities and drawing out their strengths and not magnifying their weaknesses where they like self, um, self-load on it. So just sitting here, well, standing here, listening to all of that. Yeah. So with regards to our young people... Um, across the board like you get to see it like first like frontline kind of thing like I teach kids um, with the Rise Academy how to DJ in, like in the Fantastic. primary schools and all that and I love it like it's even yesterday we, we had we had you know 
we had our session yesterday and just watching like eight nine ten year olds being able to mix like mondays is like my my, my advanced class so like now they're mixing like four songs one after the other in like two and a half minutes wow now for me being able to kind of be in that position to to influence them at that stage sure. is amazing but what's it like when you because i know that the age that you're dealing with right now like we're talking teenagers yeah. so so key stage three and four so that's basically basically secondary school yeah. that i work with um and you see the transitional change where um children from like deprived areas face a lot of pressures however like you were saying about the music thing when i do my sessions i tend to have music on in the background like uh-huh. instrumental is like how we've got it now because i feel like they learn more i think anything said over a beat goes into your brain there's nothing you can do about it it's just whether you're operating on your left brain or your right brain at the time that you're, you're taking in the information yeah so with the young people what i did is that i did a study um where i asked a, over 100 year 10 students what are the major factors that influence you in your life? Because there was a study that was done in um, Michigan University in the 80s, uh, in the 50s, the 80s, and I think that in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. Um, But I want to do a UK version because most of our studies, um, our sociology studies are based around America. Mm -hmm. What I found out uh, when I got the results back, I um, collected the data. And what was surprising is that at the top of the list, at 26% of our year 10 students, uh-huh. home was the most influential factor, followed by friends. Okay. Then it was joint between school and social media. And after okay. that was like religion and, and like capital, like people mm-hmm. who was driven by money. Um, so home is a major factor. Um, and home being... Um, within the home and also the area that they live in. Yeah. And I think sometimes we we do not take into account how influential our households are, especially in this day and age of social media as well. Yeah. And for example, like a young people, because of like how they are engaged in, in social media, be it Snapchat, be it WhatsApp, be it Instagram, like I think we are setting our young people up for self-validation by outsourcing. So getting credit from other people makes them feel good. Yes. And because we're doing instant gratif- gratification as well. Yeah. So for example, I will, a young person will post something. If they don't get the right amount of likes, they'll feel disconnected and feel upset. <sighs> Talk about it. So also we're not building up our young people to have courage. Yeah. And we're not building our young people um, like to, to sort of get the courage to, to even engage with one another in a mm-hmm. relationship. So, yeah. for example, you have like Tinder, where you can just go on an app, like someone, swipe to the left or swipe to the right, boom, that's it. You mm. don't even have to go out and order food anymore. You can literally just go on, boom, 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 that's it. You don't even have to go out and try on clothes and you just go on and say, Do you know what, misguided or boohoo, or you can go on certain things and just be like, all right, cool, I want that, that's it. We are building up our next nation to literally have phones and outsourcing as their way of life and it's dangerous because if you're not giving them the skills and the tools to just literally be yourself without looking outside you're they, basically their lives are going to be run by the judgment of others and you know how mean the world can be yeah so what we need to do is disconnect them take the phones from them like when you go into most corporate jobs yeah anyone that's around our age will tend to be working at a desk and then they'll put their take their phone out and then they'll place their phone down. Or they will have a, you know the cases on your phone that's mm-hmm. got the flat, the lever, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. That's it, and it'll be on the side. Anybody, most people, not to say anybody, most people under the age, let's say under under 30, mm-hmm. yeah, what they'll do at their, at their desk will have their phone facing up. They'll get a message like, ting, look at it, whether they answer or reply. Yeah. Um, is a different story, but it'd be faced up. They'll be keep looking when they get messages to sit. The next generation above them will have their phones facing down. Yeah. Because we grew up without, you know, having the social media as our self gratification or yeah. outsourcing it. So But we, but still saying we're not we're not saying that the the, the gen- generation above the younger one, so like the over thirties, 
maybe late 30s, early. We're not saying that they don't do that as well, well but it's, it's less likely. Exactly. Definitely. And the numbers are like a lot, a lot smaller yeah. um, because we know the, the validation. We just grew up in that time. Now, social media has its has its benefits because, you know, you've got people that's made money off YouTube. You mm -hmm. know, there's, there's avenues. But having that as the, the, the basis for how you live your life is very dangerous in this current climate. Because it can go really left or go really right. No, no. Do you know what? Do you know the, the funny thing is? I've just looked at my phone over here. Yeah. And it's, and it's actually facing down. Exactly. My point. <laughs> exactly my point. Exactly my point. So. I, th I didn't even realise. I didn't even realise. That's mad. That's mad. That's actually crazy. <laughs> there's, there's something small Something small as that. But it yes. just shows a, a difference between like baby bloomers and, and, and Generation Z, like there's a massive difference in connecting with social media. And I feel like if you don't know, if we don't literally right now engage with the young people and say, hey, because what we do is that if it's not, I'll say generically, we tend to give our young people happiness instead of showing them happiness. Mm -hmm. Let me explain that a bit further. Okay. Giving them happiness is them saying, do you know what? I want this. You're like, do you know what? You want that? I'm going to make you happy. I'm going to give it to you, which is fine. But showing them happiness is giving them an alternative. Say, look, these are the other things that you can do. And I feel like if we just allow our young people to make certain judgments without it being educated or having the experience backed by someone who's been through it, be it a mentor or, or an adult, it can be very dangerous, as we see with our young people when it comes to um, uh, crime today at the yeah. moment. Um, and it's, it's our young people are dying at uh, extreme crazy crazy numbers unfortunately yes yeah, it's, um, it's, it's mad right now bro it's definitely not a great place on the on the roads it's not yeah it's not safe for do you know what it's it's, it's <laughs> you know it's weird a, a young person that i worked with who's involved in um crime mm -hmm. um unfortunately because he's involved in postcode wars and that sort of thing he i said to him so what do you think will happen to me if i was walking in your area and he's like nothing will happen to you i was like why like and he's like, well, you're not old enough. I was like, wow. So it's not even just about skin color that wow. seems to be represented. He said, you're not, you're not, they see you as an older, so they're not even going to bother you. I'm like, I could be going through the same struggles. I could live in the same estate. We could be on the same kind of, he's like, no, but you're not old enough. So it's like, I get it now. So, so for, for those listening now, I know some of you are getting like a, a really good insight on, on what it's like, you know, with, with youth culture right now. Um, just explain like the postcode war thing. Okay. The postcode wars is basically um, if a certain group of people live in like, let's say SW9, they will class that as their territory. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a tribe thing. Mm -hmm. If another set of people live in like SW2, they will say, oh, that's them over there from that estate, that area, that part of the the, the bar, bar or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um we don't like them. It's literally just based upon area, it's based upon your blocks, based upon a certain street. Um, it's 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 been going on for a little while. Before before it became postcode, it's more about area. So when you had like rival areas like Peckham and Brixton, for example, yeah. that was just Peckham and Brixton. I don't really paid attention to the postcodes until afterwards when there was that certain when it broke down even more to certain like fractions, then it was like, okay, though, this part of Brixton don't like that so part of Brixton. That part of Peckham don't really get along with the yeah. other side of Peckham and then New Cross and then da, da, da. So it broke down even more. So there's more like young groups of people now than there's ever been, ever, ever been. So it's based <laughs> upon that, based upon an area, people go to like proper like war with each other on an area that they don't own. You now you see to me, maybe maybe it just it, maybe it's just a, a generational thing, maybe I don't know maybe it's a, it's a you know an upbringing thing. Like I was born in St George's in Tooting, yeah. My mom and dad like where where are our family houses? Like the house is in a in a really it's like in between like Tooting Beck and Ballum. There's an actual, if you look it up, there's an actual, there's an area called Upper Tooting. Yeah. Yep. There's a little area in between Ballum and Tooting, Upper Tooting. That's where, that's where the family house is. But I've grown up in both areas. So like, you know, whenever somebody says SW, I'm like, oh, Ballum or SW, so, oh, do you? like, but that's as far as it goes, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm proud 
of the area that I that I come from, and I've proud because I've been able to to kind of grow and live a certain you know way and life to show somebody else and say, well, look, like we're from the same ends. Like you can do, like you don't have to go down that route. Like you don't have to go down that road. But to go and like actually wanna fight somebody who's from Tootin because I'm from Balham, to me, that makes no sense. Definitely. But you see it with um, football. Arsenal and Tottenham are right next to each other. Okay. Um, and they okay. go at it all the time. All right. Okay. Um, uh, Parliament, we see Labour, Conservatives go at it all the time. Like we see wars, we see more war than we see love on yeah. our screens than anything else. You, you don't really see love of one another, no matter where you, you don't. So on the street, our young people are not seeing love. They see more hate and they see more like selfishness where they will grab and take from one another because one, they could be dealing with low self-esteem. Two, they could be dealing with mental health issues. Three, it could have just been like wrong place, wrong time and whatever. But we are showing them more violence than we are about love our young people you can look at superheroes mm-hmm. superheroes is based upon fighting yeah saving the day villains yeah. heroes villains yeah. heroes it's always about good versus bad yeah all the time whether yeah. you're gonna go down the bad route or the good route it's a different story but we always we're showing them a lot of versing 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 there's not enough of coming together and i feel like the only place which is quite it's quite funny in a sense but the only place where i see a group of people no matter what um uh no matter what your background is, no matter your class, no matter your race or religion or creed, whatever, the only two places where I find that there is there isn't any rivalry Talk about it. is in a nursery mm-hmm. or in prison. Like you got your different sections, but mm-hmm. you can get different class of people in this, because there's there's one love, they understand what they're what they gotta do is basically the get primary through. mission, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then if and then it's all about sticking together. And then you kind of find out more about the other person because you're in the same environment. There's not, you might have a little bit more money in prison than you do the next person, but you're wearing the same clothes, mm-hmm. you go to bed at the same time, mm-hmm. you eat the same food. Mm-hmm. So when it's like, when it's an even playing field, then it's like there's no cost system in it. There's no one that's higher than the other. Mm-hmm. In nursery, you eat the same food unless you're going to, you just there's like pat lunch and you might, yeah. you, your mum might have bought bun and cheese and my yeah, mum yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, idiot yeah. sandwich or whatever, right? Yeah. But you play at the same time. You might get picked up at different times, but you play at the same time. You are in the same spaces. Like it's 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 literally in those two environments are the only places that I know of, anyway, where you see more collective people sticking together as nursery um, and in prisons. Yeah, I fully agree. Gotta say good morning. Goes out to the uh, carp crew on the WhatsApp. It starts at home. Young ones not getting the love uh, from some parents. What chance do they have if they don't? have respect um from and for their family this is, and another thing as well because we're in an environment especially around austerity there isn't anything outside of the home where children can be occupied and be safe so when it comes to being at home now when they spend more time at home some parents work might work more than one job especially if it's a single parent home as well um, and it's more than two children it's a struggle so let's say the house isn't big and there's three children and there's one parent and then mum's got one room the children got the other one so it's like three people in one room a bunk bed another and um, a single bed Mm -hmm. that person's growing up they're getting you know maturity Mm -hmm. they're going through puberty all them sort of things and they're facing the struggles but they're not really engaging with mum because mum's working multiple jobs and she might be doing xyz to make ends meet and she doesn't have the time to focus on her young people in her home so they're going to be influenced by outside. Sometimes some parents ain't help, helping the situation by not engaging, but sometimes they don't have the time because there's so much going on. Plus money as well. If you have more than two children, you're not getting money for the third one. So, <laughs> so then you've got to, do you see what I'm saying? There's so many pressures. Then there's pressures of Christmas. Then there's, then there's that whole essence of pride as well because a lot of our parents do not want to ask for help because it's like, it seems like I'm weak or I can't do my job properly. Mm-hmm. So what do they do? They just leave them with YouTube, leave them with social media, just get them a little PS4 and they'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But they're getting self-validation from outside the home. Sometimes, a lot of cases as well that I've come across recently that parents are not 
literally when they have the platform to do enough they're not so when i get them to come in to engage with me and their child in school sometimes they don't turn off for parents even sometimes they don't pick up the phone i'm like i'm gonna have a meet with you so you understand what's happening in the school i'm in this position here to help a lot of parents don't know what's happening in the school so use me whilst i'm here for the short term so i can give you the 411 about how your child's behaving their lengths uh, their strengths their weaknesses and what you want me to do whilst i'm here to engage young people that is hard to get across many schools you don't get that if it, because schools don't have the right amount of budget to yeah. get outsourced people to come in and and to work with young people so i say to parents like use me whilst i'm here i'm all for your child i will stay extra time blah, blah, blah. what do you need me to do sometimes they don't even bother they don't turn up or they'll be like no my child's fine i'm like you know what's sad what breaks my heart is nine times out of ten young people that i work with will, will, in schools will come to school super duper tired mm -hmm. i say to them have you had breakfast they're like no i'm like what time did you go to bed they'll say about 10 i'm like what time did you go to sleep yeah they're like i don't even know so they come to school yeah tired and hungry then it gets to lunchtime some children don't have money mm -hmm. on their so it's like they're not gonna eat at lunchtime because mom hasn't mom hasn't got enough money to, to give mm -hmm. them so they're riding the whole day without food without energy yeah without the right amount of sleep yeah so they're gonna Knock be act right yeah. so it's just they're even like, literally they're acting real aggressive and aggy because they're frustrated because their body's saying, feed me. You're mm -hmm. young, you're developing. You're meant to be like nutrition every single day. And they're not, and we're not even paying attention to something just simple as breakfast. So um, a colleague of mine, he runs a breakfast club in the school mm -hmm. and he just gets them to sit down and they just, we just chop it up. How was your day? How was your week? Like how many young people have not heard? How was your week? Like what was the highlight of your week? Mm -hmm. What was the downfall of your week? So what can we do next week to make sure it's better? Or even our young boys, you know, um, just saying like, how you doing, sir? Like, keep up, man. You're good. I love you, you know. You're a good you. They don't even hear love from another yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, I mean, for me, I I have no, I, I have no regard. Like, I'll say to the next man, yo, I love you, bro. Like, I do it all the time. Like, Solly message this morning. Hey, bro. Hey, love my guy, Solly, you know. See that guy there? I love that guy. See you like, Shinobi, the man there, I love the man there. Like, I got no problem. Like, there was something that's happened within society where we took, we take, like, love for another man as being something of, of like, being, like, lust. Yeah. Where it's not even the case. For biblical terms, you know what I mean? Jesus loved other men where he's like, you know what? I love you in my heart. You are something special to me. Do you know what I mean? I'll kiss you on your forehead and say, do you know what? You're my... Yeah. You look at films like... 300 and he's losing soldiers and all that he's about love i love my men because they mm. are part of me like that's ancient times something happened where it was like all right loving another man and saying you know what? i love you i got you bro whatever seems to be a bit like wait a minute and we don't do it enough because it's seen as too affectionate and we thrive men we have to be affectionate to everybody because it's within our nature we're born with x y chromosomes meaning we have more of our theme with just as much female as we do as a female gene as we do a, a, a male gene yeah. but we were just so strong of being tense being the alpha male which is all good and great but showing love I know a lot of times when I've seen like roadmen <laughs> yeah have like when they're out with their daughter yeah and their daughter's like yeah daddy let's cross the road and they've got the little pink bag and they say can you have my bag you think they're acting all tense nope they're holding that pink yeah, bag yeah that's right if you're if you're yeah. a road man and your daughter says to you here Sip this tea, and there's no tea in that little teacup. Hey, listen, you, <laughs> you, you are drinking listen. That. I know some real dons, you know, mm. some real dons. <laughs> you get me? Phone a man at a certain time. He's with the kids. Hey, fam, listen. Hold on, hold on. Uh, princess, hey, <laughs> hey, princess, put down the teacup, babes. I'm on the phone. Hold on, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, all right, all right, cool. You can brush my hair in a minute, all right? Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, I know some real guys, bro. That, that's that's reality there. That's what I'm saying. So, we've kind of, we've got a lot of work to do in terms of dismantling this whole structure that's been put upon our young people, uh, be it self-inflicted or it's been an outside influence where we're not creating enough for them to thrive in. Like, we literally have to start from the ground and work up which puts me in a good position because that works with the documentary of mine that's coming out yes. the 23rd of October. 
Um, it's showing in Birmingham and on the 8th of November it's showing here in London Premier here. tell them about it please bro. so the documentary is called The Dole Test The Birth of Self Hate what I did was I took a social experiment which was done in the 1940s by two psychologists a married couple called Kenneth and Mamie Clark what they wanted to do was show basically the effects of um, black children in America um, the effects of their development when it comes to separate but equal laws basically is separate schools separate toilets separate bathrooms separate cinemas separate bars separate everything the effects of people but mainly children um, and where it starts um the tests were were great in a sense where it showed them exactly what they wanted but the results were horrible because what they did was that they had two dolls together and they said to these african-american children which doll's the pretty doll which one's the ugly doll and all the time they pointed towards the um, white doll as the pretty one and the bad and ugly doll as the black one mm. that then birthed other little civil rights movements um like rosa parks's movement mm-hmm. um malcolm x's movements um martin luther king's movement so many things that came in the 50s was because of this law so that birthed when they took down and they said you know what okay we're going to have integration where you can go to um any school you want to is mm-hmm. because they said you know what, hey there's something that's going on in the world it's like yeah whatever's that we're going to show you so they these married couple what love can do a married couple came together and put together a social experiment so i've done a uk version of it and um same kind of results love that my bro love that so like how can because I can see that you, you've touched a few nerves this morning, especially like with the young people stuff. I know there's a lot of parents listening. Mm-hmm. How can people get in contact with you? All right. If you follow me on um, Instagram, it's Daryl Blake, B-A-R-R-E-L dot B-L-A-K-E. If you follow me on Twitter, it will be Daryl underscore underscore Blake. Um, I'm starting to write programs now as well. So I'm going to take it into community centers and um, because there's not enough like outside teaching outside of Monday to Friday. So mm-hmm. like Saturday schools or Pan- yeah. Pan-African schools. So I've written a couple of programs um, which I'm willing to take into communities and um, where we can start having more of a conversation and acting right now to save our young people. Bro, do you know, hold on, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Just, 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 just for the stuff that you're doing, bro, like, like, that's that that's the least. That's the least I, I, I could give you this morning. Um I wanna say thank you so much for taking the time out uh and joining me and us uh for my first interview. Like Yeah, I'm honored. And just and kind of just setting and just setting the, the tempo. So you know, people get to see there's there's another side of Milk Tray. It's not just about the hype and all that, and it's not just about the motivation. I'm really about trying to inspire people on that next level, especially like getting into our, our kids man like there's, there's there's so so much going on out there right now um for all our kids do you know what i mean like mm-hmm. regardless what where they're from and what the area like it's it's all kind of crossed over and it's just getting mad sticky so i just love what you're doing bro and i really do appreciate the time you're taking out thank you very much join us. i appreciate it. I, I'm, I haven't made it until i get into one of the milk chain motivation uh right so so <laughs> no ne- no next next year next year I, I promise we're gonna put it we're putting this on radio <laughs> it's right recorded, now you know yes yeah, recorded <laughs> we're gonna have you on the first milk trade motivation event oh, uh, that'll be taking place probably oh. march or april on next nerd, year on nerd. yeah now we got about just under 30 seconds to wrap up miss keisha is in the building <laughs> she's <laughs> here looking all fabulous and all that good stuff she's here from 10 a.m till 12 and i will be back on Thursday, 7 a.m. till 10 round there on your number one station, Flex FM. I- I've had a great show, man. Uh, don't forget, you can listen back to the show. Head over to our website. It's so until Thursday. Have a great one. Peace. Flex.